Sharon, let's talk a bit about young writers because you, I don't want to say you're a dramaturge, but you <laughs> help young writers and you work in workshops. How do you guide a young writer? They bring you a, a raw script and how do you bring them along? I suppose the first, if I read a, a new script by a relatively young writer, or at least a new writer, and they may or may not be young, um, I'm always interested, it always seems to me that particularly for a young writer, it, it's a great act of faith and vulnerability to give that work to someone if you haven't had a lot of experience or interaction or feedback. So uh, when I have the opportunity, and I usually press for that, um, I first of all try to meet with them and just to get a sense of, <laughs> of who they are, to have some kind of a personal, however, I mean it's not, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to call it superficial, but you know, a relationship uh, with that individual. And then I want them to tell me, you know, tell me something about the play. Like where did it come from? What, what, why do you, why, what brought you to this story? And do you, do you know yet, because often they don't, like what, I'm interested in their intentions, <laughs> you know? Well, do you, what, what do you want the audience, do you know what the audience, you want the audience to take away, with, you know, after they, after they see this show? Uh, and, and, and I want to talk kind of in more, in, in just very general terms, first of all, to get a kind of sense of um, how, what I might say to some playwrights or some individuals could be very destructive to another kind of individual. <laughs> So I want to kind of get, what's our language here? What language do I use with this individual so that, so that I'm not um, intimidating them when I don't mean to, or I'm not being uh, destructive uh, in, in any way. So, so, so I begin uh, trying to set up some kind of a personal relationship from, from which we can then start to talk more specifically you know, ab about right. the text. The other thing is, I say, this is the document, <laughs> right? That's the play. The play is the document. I don't want to hear about what your sister did with her boyfriend, actually. Like, we covered that when you talked about maybe how you got here. I want you to show me in the document what, you know, what it is you're trying to do or where the little seed is that would allow an actor to access that in any way whatsoever, you know? I want to lay out... Um, sometimes choices, possibilities, you know, this is what this makes me think of, and did, you know, um, and mainly I'm looking for the new writer, their intention, and the other thing though is that quite often because there's so many bloody programs now that people go and take how to write everything in the world, and so usually sometimes you meet young people, they've gone through the short story workshop and they've gone through the poetry workshop and they, they're writing a novel in their spare time and now they're taking a playwriting course at the <laughs> some place or other now, and this is the this is the, the more screenwriting, which is even more common. <laughs> and this is what uh, and this is where it's where it's coming from. And so you learn a lot of um, crap things. You know, there's those stock questions. You know, mm -hmm. what's at stake for the characters? What's their journey? You know, all, all of that stuff. I'm. There's some plays in which those questions are valid. There's other plays in which really you have to find how they manifest themselves in the work, because it may not be a naturalistic work, for example. I'm looking sometimes for some people just have a sense of the dramatic. And so they're writing something that's, that's got all sorts of things that are working in it, but it's, there's that sense of the dramatic in it. They've got certain things in it that you really find surprising and interesting and inherently dramatic. They just, they just have the knack. All of the rest of the stuff you can, I don't know, I don't know, learn is quite the right word, but you know, you, you can give them clues for that. But when you find somebody who has that crazy idea in their head or this is what they th how they think it's gonna happen, you think, ah, you know, what a great idea. I never, I never thought of that. Or a fresh story, 
which is really hard to find too. Do you, when, when we look at actors, you often go, yeah, they can act, and no, no, they can't act. It seems to be this thing you cannot teach that somehow, and you can't teach acting, but you can teach everything around acting. Yeah. Is it the same with writing? You I say, would say that's so. a writer, and you're nice, but you're not a writer. Now, you may have problems as a writer, but you are a writer, so away we go. Yeah, I, I think that that's, that that's true. But as you say, everything around it, there are pieces that, are, that I read and I think, oh, yeah, this has had a workshop, and this is. <laughs> You know, all I can, I, I, I can, it seems to me as if I can see this is the answer to the dramaturgical question that someone has asked, and this is the answer to that dramaturgical question that someone has asked, and yet there's no, I would call, like, kind of life in it, if you know what I mean. It's just, like, I want it to be like a, like a piece of music, <laughs> you know? So leaving the side of those who are mechanically following it, Yep. And turning to those who are, there is life in it, how then do you help that writer? Or what would you say to that, a young writer who's coming to you with a script? Someone wants to write, send Sharon Pollock a script. What would you say to them? They say, I want to write this play. I live in whatever, Cobacanc, Ontario, and I want to write a play. And I'd I write back and say, tell me about it. I mean, people do send me stuff like that. And then, uh, depending on somehow my sense of how vulnerable they might be in terms of what their experience has been with that work or where it's coming from, and I know a little bit about the work, I would go through the, the play line by line by line. And any time I had a question, I would, have, I would ask a question. I, wouldn't have a, I might not have an answer. At that stage, I might, I'm not putting any what I think are the answers, and I, or I'm saying, this is what I get from this section. What is, your, is that your intention? And if it isn't their intention, then why am I missing your intention? And sometimes you say, oh, now I get it. I just read that the wrong, you know, I read it the wrong way. Um, I would tell writers, you know, do you go to plays or read them? It's amazing that some don't, <laughs> you know. Um, and by and large, you, what kind of scripts are you seeing? I mean, are you seeing versions of Eva Janaya, or are you seeing versions of Three's Company? I would say versions of Three's Company most often, you know, or variations. So uh, mirrors era. of what people have seen on and television. And people are afraid of writing a, a you know, a, like even today, the playwright said, um, I'm really interested in the political implications, like how agribusiness is destroying the rural farm, but that's political, so I can't write that. So I'm, no, you just have to find the people through which that story is told, <laughs> right? Right. You know, so there's a beer, there's a perception that uh, producers aren't interested in political work, producers aren't interested in, um, and these are white writers I'm talking about, right? As soon as you start to move into, uh, and there's where you see, uh, I would say because the workshop hasn't quite contaminated them yet, <laughs> you would see, <laughs> you would have um, uh, Asian, you know, Asian Canadian, um, or, um, Caribbean Canadian, <laughs> you know, you have uh, sometimes those marginalized communities having a vitality. Oppression breeds good, good theater, I think. Uh, Why? Some, well, because there's conflict, first of all, and often they're driven by a sense of, in, you're driven by a passion. Maybe it's injustice, and maybe it's wanting to get that, your story, your people's story told in some way. And so your motivation to write is driven. A lot of people want to be playwrights. I want to be a playwright. Oh fuck, I'm going to have to write a play. You know, so they're, they're not writing the plays from any, any need to write that play. Right. I, I'd go to universities and you know, oh, you're, you're getting a BFA in playwriting. So these are the exercises you have to do and this is the, yeah, you know, I have to write a one-act play. Oh, you know, like, do you know what it's about? No, I'm, I said I couldn't be in this, you know, now you're in BFA. BF, an MFA, oh, now you have to write a full-length play. I mean, what would that be? How many minutes? You know, like, I couldn't do that. A play comes, the need, uh, a story needs to be told. Something comes to you that needs to be expressed, and you have to express it. Otherwise, you're working in the entertainment industry. I don't work in the entertainment industry. What I do is enter, I want it to be entertaining, because who the hell doesn't want to be, enter you know? But That's the trick, is to make it entertaining, you know? So, 
but what we have are tons of people sitting down and writing. You've got nothing to say, actually. You've got nothing to say, and it's taken you 82 pages to say it. But they've seen an entertainment industry. They've seen a television set full of 87 channels of entertainment industry. And they'll industry. probably get a big production, and it'll go all across the country. That doesn't mean that I think it's anything other than the enter. You know, you're pandering to an audience. <laughs> you know, and that's okay for you. I just don't want to do that. So, is there again? Like, uh, sorry to pull it back to actors, but that's sort of my frame of refer reference. And you're an actor as well. You know, we we know that the, the range of the actors go from those which are pure performer, and those that are pure actors. And in between, we're all a mix of performer and actor. You know, the purest actor has zero performing abilities, but they have the magic, and the performer has zero content, but they're incredible performers, and we're all a mix. I'm wondering if you can say the same with writing, in terms of the industry entertainment part and then the artist who actually is driven to say that story. And I, I, I think there's lots of uh, playwrights who are very successful and write very entertaining and engaging material. It just doesn't happen to be what I like, where my taste lies, right? Um, I can go to a Norm Foster play and and, and laugh a lot, <laughs> right? I can enjoy, I can enjoy that play, um, you know. I, I, and he's writing a certain kind of play that that he that he's best at, right? Yeah. I would certainly consider him a playwright. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, but he's I I don't know if he's driven. Maybe all of us have our own specific engine that's driving us yeah. you know I don't know that he's driven by the same thing but we were working we could sit down and talk about lots of things that we would share and he might have something very useful to say about a play of mine and I might have something useful to say about a play of his if either of us were interested in having that conversation or Tom Stoppard who says no matter what you're going to write about you got to write a great story yeah and people got to be entertained that's right but that's slightly different meanings of entertainment as opposed to flash and dance and something an easy meal so to speak but you can entertain on many levels. You That's can right. entertain on a surface level and a mid, and then you can entertain on a deep, deep level. Um, and it's sort of like I think, you know, I might go, I don't know, to the Museum of Modern Art in Chicago and look at, you know, the works there, and given, you know, I would, en I would enjoy it and be stimulated by it on a certain level. I could go with. Uh, one of my grandsons who would start to say, oh, look at this, and he would start to tell me things that I didn't know, and I'd be looking <coughs> at it and say, oh, yeah, n n now, I get, now I get this, right? right. You know, so I think that the theater is like that, that, um, you know, and, and maybe you can know too much about the theater. In other words, that's when I go to the theater and I say, oh, yeah, that's an interesting choice there. This is an interesting performance there. I never would have thought of that, you know, and it's all happening simultaneously in your head as the play is running along. Uh, you've, you've lost a bit of the capacity that a child has when it first comes across something and, right. you know, and is, and is totally engaged by it. You've sacrificed that and the big fear is, I'm probably off topic here, but at any rate, the big fear is um, for me is when that starts then to intrude upon the act of creation. That when you sit down to write the piece, a, a new piece, that that same analytical number starts to destroy the possibility of achieving whatever it is you're trying to do. It becomes a box that you're in when you watch a show, but you don't, you want to be able to get rid of that box. When you, when you sit down to actually create something. Um, I think I'm a little bit nuts, so that works for me. Like, I mean, I think I am able to get rid of the box <laughs> a bit, but that may only be my, I have a need to believe that.